cultural education, then what about skill, education of skills? Certainly that's what training is, education of skills, knowing what technique to use according to what, what kind of treatment to use in accordance with what kind of diagnosis and to develop small abilities or skillful abilities. And so then we read or study or learn from skillful practitioners like Harry Stack Sullivan or Carl Rogers or R.D. Lang, where we learn how to listen, we learn how to converse in a, in a so-called therapeutic manner, we learn how to hear through what's being said. This is all part of the technical, skillful education. How to listen differently from listening to another conversation, which you encounter. If you go to a party and you say to somebody, they ask you, you're dancing, and somebody says to you, and, and what, where are you? And, oh, I'm a psychologist. They step back one step because they know they're being heard and looked at differently than they are by other people. Yes. A book which is lacking in power cannot be moral. It's a great sentence. Cannot be moral. Dullness is worse than obscenity. <laughs> Hear that, Clarence Thomas. A dull book is wicked. A dull book is wicked. It may intend to be as good as gold, as nice as pie, as sweet as can be, but if it is banal and boring, it is evil. <laughs> now think of the textbooks you have read in psychotherapy. And we laugh at that, but by God, that is an enormously important point, and it follows up on your question about beauty. If the rhetoric is dead, the thing is dead. The language of psychotherapy is dead. The DSM, no pictures. <laughs> what does this matter? Who cares what Descartes wrote centuries ago, and hasn't the Reformation taught us to read the New Testament each in our own fashion? By exposing the background to our notions of reality and imagination, I am saying we cannot get away from our tradition. Every kid playing his push-button games, entering virtual reality, falling behind in his math homework, and noticing his dreams has started down the slippery slope to perdition. He or she is escaping from reality, seduced by the irrational underworld of pagan powers who lured good Christians in Descartes' time with magic and alchemy, and in earlier times of the great desert saints with the temptations of the night. As you know, these holy men lived, in soli lived solitary lives in caves and kept vigils through the night to prevent falling asleep lest they dream. That's why they kept their vigils. Because in the dreams, the pagan powers returned, all kinds of irrational forces. Most fashionable, I suspect today, is uh, biogenetics, and brain mapping. And one of our major figures in that field, a man named Dr. Goldstein, who's a pioneer in the discovery of neurotransmitters, has written, it is not a question of psychology versus biology. On the contrary, in the final analysis, but our present knowledge falls far short, Psychology is biology. That's what you're going to be up against in the next years, if not already. That actually, psychology is, uh, the, all the things we talk about are manifestations of the brain one way or another. You can read uh, Dawkins, you can read Dennett, um, and there is no such thing as consciousness. Ed could tell us a lot more about this. Not that he stands with those people, but he has stood against them. Uh, and therefore, we should get rid of this whole nonsense that we're in of psychotherapy, discussions of awareness, becoming more conscious, and so on and so forth, because these are 
derivatives of neurological, biological, um, uh, glandular, uh, looking, uh, hormonal, so and so forth. And the more we know about this, which we are learning all the time, uh, and more individualizing it so that we don't have simply brain patterns in general, but your particular brain patterns, uh, the less we need all this talk. <laughs> 